find the derivative of g of x equal to x times the inverse sine of x squared plus x. First, let's recall the rule for the derivative of inverse sine, and we'll say we're using u as a function of x on the inside. So the rule is going to be 1 over radical of 1 minus u squared times the derivative of u. Let's rederive this. I like to work from first principles, so that way if I forget a formula, I have a shot of getting it back somehow. What's going to make this work is our rule for the derivative of an inverse function, which is just given by flip over the derivative of your original function and then evaluate at f inverse. Here we have our original function is sine of x. The derivative of sine of x is just cosine x. So we stick this in, and I'm going to have, okay, derivative of f is cosine, inverse function is sine inverse, and then this turns into one of these problems where we just evaluate this and put it in algebraic form. I set up a right triangle, and I'm going to write the inside out as theta equal to sine inverse of x. The language is we can push the inverse sine to the other side. And then that says sine theta equals x. I want to write that as x over 1, so that way I can work with the right triangle. My sine is just opposite over hypotenuse, so I can put the x and the 1 in those corresponding spots. So our opposite's x, or hypotenuse is 1, and then by the Pythagorean theorem, we'll have that 1 minus x squared, square root, gives me the length of the other side. So now, the cosine is just going to be given by adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's radical 1 minus x squared. I go back to my quotient here for the der derivative of the inverse function, and so that means I want the cosine, so that's just 1 over radical 1 minus x squared, as promised. So now we can apply the derivative. So we're going to start off with a product rule. So it's just going to be derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. And this, we're going to have to peel apart using a chain rule. I rewrite the first one again. I leave my x out in front. And then I note here, well, the way I like to think of this is, I just write out this first one, where I have the u, I put a box. And then I'm going to put a box on top with a prime on it. Now all I have to do is take a look at what's inside the box. So we put our x squared plus x. We put our x squared plus x. And now we just have to evaluate and expand. So for this top part here, the derivative of x squared plus x is just 2x plus 1. And then this here, I'm not going to bother with this because sure we could expand it. But since we're just trying to show how the derivative works, might as well leave it like that for now. So that's our product rule with the chain rule on an inverse sign. Let's try an inverse tangent. So let's go with h of x equal to inverse tan of natural log of x. Again, recall the rule. Derivative of the inverse tangent is take 1 over 1 plus your u squared, then multiply that by u prime. Let's do the derivation just to make sure we can do it. I have f of x equals tan x. So that's what we're going to be taking the inverse function of. f prime is going to be equal to secant squared. So the derivative of the inverse function is 1 over the original derivative evaluated at the inverse function. So I want to figure out what is secant squared of tan inverse of x. And just remember, the square is on the outside of the expression. So we're really trying to get secant tan inverse of x. And once we have that, we'll square it. OK. So we want to use our language trick again. I want to get rid of the inside, so I'm going to call that theta equal to tan inverse of x, which is the same as tan theta equal to x. And we write that as x over 1, so that way I can put it in terms of the right triangle. Tangent's going to be opposite over adjacent, so x goes in the opposite. My adjacent's 1. OK, we square both of these, add them together. Square root gives me the hypotenuse, which is 1 plus x squared square root. With that, I can go and stick something in for here, but I need to know what the secant's going to be. So remember, secant is 1 over cosine, 
cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we flip it over, we get hypotenuse over adjacent. Our hypotenuse is 1 plus x squared radical over 1. So now I can make some sense of this. We just stick in our secant and we square it. So this radical 1 plus x squared just turns into 1 plus x squared. So that's my formula for derivative of inverse tan. I go to my original h. So h prime, I'm going to put a box where the square is. And then I'm going to put a box where the derivative is. So we just stick in our natural log into there. That's the inside. And then we multiply by the derivative of natural log. That's just 1 over x. And so then we wind up with this expression, which we leave it like that. No point messing around since you can't really crunch it down any further. OK, let's finish up with an inverse secant. Not likely you're going to see this one, but you never know. So we're going to take the derivative of s of x equal to inverse secant of e to the 2x. The rule, inverse secant of u prime is going to be equal to 1 over the absolute value of u times radical 1 minus u squared, that quantity times u prime. The way we derive this, as usual, from first principles, in case you forget it, you might have a shot of rederiving it. So the derivative of the inverse function is 1 over the derivative of the original function evaluated at the inverse function. In this case, my original is secant x. Its derivative is secant x tan x. So I want to stick this into my rule for the derivative of an inverse. So it's going to be 1 over, OK, so the idea is Wherever I see an x in the derivative, we're going to shove in an f inverse. So this will be secant of secant inverse x, and then tan of secant inverse x. OK, so secant with secant inverse, that always collapses to x. So I'll need to explain why we get an absolute value. But first, let's just go and play with the reference angle for secant inverse of x. So let's see what happens. So I want to unravel secant inverse of x equal to theta. We've got to call this something, so I call it theta. I can push the inverse secant to the other side, which gives me secant theta equal to x. I'll write that as x over 1, so I can use the geometry of a right triangle. And note that secant is going to be 1 over cosine. So in terms of the right triangle, we're looking at 1 over adjacent over hypotenuse, or flip it over hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's going to say hypotenuse goes with x, adjacent goes with 1. So we have x, we have 1, and then our other, other side is radical 1 minus x squared. So we'll note, okay, secant secant inverse goes to x, and then tan secant inverse of x, if we're looking at just the reference angle, is going to be, well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be just the radical 1 minus x squared. Now, why absolute value? Well, what will happen is, if we're looking at a reference angle in quadrant 1, no problem. We can throw away the absolute value signs, because then we're looking at x. x in the first quadrant is always going to be a positive number. It's between 0 and 1. Now, if I'm going with x negative, and the only way that can happen is if we're in quadrant 2, well, what happens there is, the tangent of secant inverse, think of it this way. The tangent in quadrant 2, we have sine over cosine. In quadrant 2, the sine is still positive, but the cosine just went negative. So we're looking at minus a positive number there, a negative number. Well, radical of 1 minus x squared is always positive, but the tangent has to be negative. So I need to throw a negative sign out in front of my 1 minus x squared. So what happens is, we pick up a minus sign here, but the way I can absorb the minus sign into something useful is to turn this into absolute value of x. OK, remember, x is a negative number. If I want to get its absolute value, I just multiply by minus 1. We're picking a minus 1 up from the tangent term, term so we get absolute value of x. OK, probably not the most important thing in the world to have down, nailed down, but that's where it comes from. OK, we just go to s prime. So I'm going to draw boxes in in my formula where I'm going to stick the e to the 2x, and then we'll just chug away. So we have 1 over 
the absolute value of the inside, radical 1 minus the inside squared times the derivative of the inside. Now we can just work things out. So we have e to the 2x inside absolute value. Now e to the 2x is always positive. Okay, there's no way I can get a negative number out of that. So I can drop the absolute value signs. For the next part, well, e to the 2x squared is just e to the 4x, and then there's nothing more I can do with that. And then the derivative of e to the 2x, just remember we rewrite e to the 2x, and then take the derivative of the top. So that's just going to throw out a 2 here. And then the e to the 2x is canceled, leaving me with 2 over radical 1 minus e to the 4x. And then that's all I can do with that.